Michael, fellow YouTubers, checking in to give you an update on my car and uh, my thoughts about it, what's going on in general. Um, during my last check-in, you might remember that I've done a regular service uh, combined with uh, something I was hoping will fix uh, a, an oil leak that the car had. Fortunately, that did not happen. Um, the rear main seal that I suspected is the cause of the oil leak was replaced and um, the oil was still leaking when I took the car home. Uh, when I saw the drip, first I was like, yeah, that's it, I'm selling the car, you know. So the guy had enough, I just put in it uh, another 300 euros, which is <laughs> honestly uh, like a quarter of the, maybe not a quarter, but the third, that's for sure, market price of this car, the best. So I was, I was, I was, I was not sure if I should do anything more to it, I would just sell it, and I was like, yeah, that's it, I'm getting a Toyota. <laughs> I was reviewing the option of getting maybe even a new Toyota or a used one, but in very good condition. That was sort of an impulse. Uh, I even made photos that I, yeah, I'm going to post this car now on a uh, car sales site, but that uh, eventually did not happen as you may see. So, uh, actually, right now as I'm riding it, it's really smooth. It's uh, all major. Mechanical issues are sorted. Uh, we just did a road trip with my family, road trip of a thousand miles. Everything went without basically a single hiccup. It was all good, but I had to top up the oil. Um, like I, I had to pour in about um, half a liter of oil for those thousand miles. When, when we when we started off, it was full. Then I. Down round like to the half between the two, um, you know, those two dots on the um, measuring stick. And so, yeah, it still has an oil leak, and I don't know where it's coming from. It can be the oil pan, it can be something else. Um, that's it, and you know, it has a lot of small issues, just as I said many times. Uh, one of the kind of major things is, uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but if you're Alpha, the uh, Twin Spark engine, uh, most of these engines of this uh, era, the JDSs I think are better at this, but they have different issues. But if you're Alpha, sounds like a diesel. That's because there is something called like the. Um, so these have variable valve time, right? And there is uh, there is a component which I don't really know what's the name of. It looks like uh, some sort of uh, gear with some oil uh, operated components. And that thing, if it starts failing, your your alpha will sound like a diesel. And mine kind of does at the startup. It's not so bad. It, it it goes off after like 30 seconds, which is considered okay-ish. 
that's another thing that starts failing okay and that's another like 150 to 200 euros fix and then we have the oil leak and then we have a lot of other little problems like the rear window um, regulators are dying then I have this um, issue with the airbags uh, that the ECU is uh, reporting an error with a non-existing um, uh, passenger seat sensor because even though the part number is the same as it used to be in this car <laughs> for some reason it still wants to have a it's still looking for that sensor in the passenger seat, which this car doesn't have, so, you know. Let me adjust the angle, I think you're a little crooked. Okay, that's better. Uh, and so on, and so on. So, uh, yeah, I've been even considering to buy a new car for some time. It's really, uh, it would be a stretch for me to buy a new car, just because I think it's, uh, cars lose value is crazy and whatever but I just want something that's reliable and um, I've been reviewing options and one of those options where okay let's just look at the offerings of the local dealerships just you know I've never really had any experience with a 159 so I find found one 159 which kind of looked okay in one of the local dealerships and um, I was like yeah why, why not check check it out okay it was it was uh, advertised as very good condition which I'll go into detail uh, just a little bit later <laughs> it's not really uh, it was looking okay ish um, and it was advertised for 4,400 euros so, well, in alpha terms and in one five nine terms, it's like uh, bottom mid range, sort of. Like it's, a, it's, a, it's on the bottom of the mid. <laughs> you can buy cheaper, but uh, they're really just garbage. And then, and then you can buy up to like ten thousand euros. Those are the like the one point eight DBIs. specs now yeah I was like okay well who knows you know it doesn't have to be necessarily bad right you, know, you can potentially get good deals um, so I went and ch checked it out it was a 2008 1.8 petrol MPI engine sport wagon 147,000 uh, kilometers on the clock um, and um, <laughs> red and it was it was looking okay from outside and I know yeah the MPI engine it's uh, not a very common engine and it's uh, definitely not a powerful one yeah uh, but I was like yeah well the MPI it's, it's basically it's a general motor Volvo engine so if if it's if it's good I mean it wasn't neglected and it's not too bad of an engine so okay let's not exclude that uh, what I did is um, I started looking at the car and um, where do I start well, the tires, okay, just uh, something common on the used cars. The tires were basically just crap. There were 2015 Falcons. Uh, they had some thread on them, but I mean, yeah, maybe you can ride them for for a year or something then you know, to replace them. So there goes what, like 150, 200 euros, just the tires right away. The brakes, both the rotors and the pads, they were junk, they had huge lips on them all around. So there goes another 200-ish euros. Okay, and we did not even open the car. 
and then it was all dinged up it was um, you know some rock chips on the hood uh, it was sprayed in a few places nothing major uh, I measured it with my gauge uh, in this thickness measuring gauge thing uh, the thickest they got it was 370 uh, micrometers which is like the factory specs are usually between 110 to 250 so it's like one layer of additional paint not too bad so it didn't have like bondo all over it it was fine now um, that's still okay but then <clears throat> I opened the car and I found out that uh, the, air, uh, the air condition doesn't work okay and, um, uh, like uh, in general uh, the interior wasn't that good uh, bits are bits were falling off um, the yeah the rear wiper I had to learn that the rear wiper is a common failure point on, on the 159 so always check the rear wiper if you're buying one of the 159s it wasn't working <laughs> as you might imagine and then what else I might be forgetting something yeah so all of these like all, all of these total up around for a you know already like 700 euro bill if you want to fix all of those and we didn't even get to the suspension which we know is problematic on the 159 so there's likely something that needs to be changed on the suspension and the suspension can get really uh, expensive really fast uh, yes uh, the suspension and you you know that the subframe rusts away on the 159s which is um, it can be like a, a new one if you can find one can be like seven to a thousand euros 700 to a thousand euros and you know <laughs> that didn't sound like um, a car that uh, would actually give me any benefits over my 156 i have right now so obviously i skipped, I skipped on it it added that uh, the, uh, the seller, the owner of this dealership, was a really a jerk. He, when I asked him what, what is what is known about the history of the car, he said, "Oh, I don't care about the history. When I buy a car, I just have a look at the uh, overall condition and I buy it." And I'm like, "Okay, well, you, you bought a crap car, or whatever." And I didn't tell him this, but that was basically what he's thinking. And, good job at selecting a good car for the dealership that's a big problem it still remains for some time because I'm not buying this car um, and I asked him okay what's the origins of the car and he said oh yeah, yeah it's Germany no no it's Austria so he couldn't even tell me where to get the car so yeah okay whatever just <laughs> you can keep it you know, yeah, so now there's just a story that uh, how it looks like when you're trying to buy a used Alpha. Uh, the general consensus on the, on the 159s that are available on the market that they are. So uh, the good ones are quite expensive. Right? They will be six, seven thousand euros, maybe even like the TPIs will be like eight or more. And that's just really a price point where I'm starting to think if, if they are worth the money because buying a car for like eight grand and then still pouring money into it to make it a daily driver I don't know guys I don't know maybe I'll do that maybe not if I find a really good deal I might do that what I will do with my 156 I still don't know I might uh, keep it wife wants to have her driver's license done which I strongly support she just she's just kind of afraid <laughs> she doesn't consider herself to be a very good uh, like you know in general with with vehicles <laughs> like 
she can even mess up a bicycle. But whatever, I think she has to she has to get a license. It will be just super helpful for us in general. And then maybe this car will be something that she will drive in the city, even though the two-wheel driving car does not have a particularly good city driver. I don't know if you can hear on the camera, but actually the when the AC is on, the, the car is doing this weird whining noise. It's sort of like a supercharger, which it doesn't have obviously. Uh, maybe the AC bearing, the AC pump bearing, uh, which new is quite an expensive item used. <laughs> I don't want the same issues for paying money for the same issues just so until it works it works um, yeah what else to say guys it's not easy to live with an alpha right um, so let me know in the comments what you think uh, let me know if you have a good natural only 159 for sale a right hand drive, okay. <laughs> that doesn't work for me. Uh, honestly, I think that's, uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, I'll try to give you some updates if there are any 